Choosing the right VM size and series in Azure can be a bit tricky if you haven't worked with them before. The default suggestions from the Azure portal is usually alright, but it's really the perfect fit for you. There's also families, versions and generations of VMs to consider, so... Uh, yeah, thankfully though, Microsoft has provided us with this amazingly simple explanation of the VM size's name. Yeah. <laughs> In this video, I'll talk a bit about how to choose the right family, series, version, and so on. Feel free to use the chapter markers and skip ahead if there's only certain parts you're interested in. I'll also leave some links down in the description that describes this topic in more detail. As always, like and subscribe if this video helps you out. And also leave a comment down below with any feedback or suggestions for new videos. And yeah, let's get started, shall we? If you're currently only working with on-prem or private clouds, it might seem strange that Azure does not let you choose a specific amount of CPU cores or gigabytes of RAM for your VMs. There's reasons for that, some of which I'll get back uh, into a bit later in the video, but for now just accept the fact that uh, it is the way it is. First let's get into VM series or families if you want to call them that. Series and families are just two terms for the same thing. When selecting a size for a VM in Azure, you are presented with options like the D4S, the A2, the N8. And the first letter in this is the VM series. Each VM series has their own characteristics, like um, the B series are burstable, the N series have GPUs, and so on. Part of the characteristics for each series is also how CPU cores and gigabytes of RAMs are balanced with each other. Some series have a high core count for each gigabyte of RAM and some have it the other way around. The series of the VM size is always the first letters of the size and they are always in capital letters. Meaning that if you see a VM size of DADSV5, there where only the first D is capital, then that would be a D series VM. Likewise, if you see a size of FX24MDS, with FX in capital letters, then that is an FX series VM. And that's the basics of how uh, series work. But depending on what Microsoft website you are viewing, they might say that the version is part of the definition of the series because on sales um, oriented Microsoft sites, they only list the first letter as the series, but on sites like, um, like the docs pages, they list the version as the part of the series name. So let's move on to versions and see why you should care about that part as well. Uh, versions wasn't really a thing back in Azure's early days, but as the years have gone by and things like uh, CPUs have come in newer versions, Microsoft had had a need to distinguish the VMs you purchase based on the underlying hardware. And that's why we've gotten VM series like the DV2, the DV3, the DV4, and even the DV5. In the size name of a VM, the version is always noted as a v2, a v4, and so on, often prefixed by an underscore, but not always. The differences between each version is usually in the underlying CPU configuration. Like when a d4 is based on either an Intel's Ice Lake or Cascade Lake Xeon CPUs, while the d4 is Ice Lake only. There's all other things that differ each version from the other as well though, like if the VM can have temporary disks and so on. My personal recommendation around versions is that unless you have very specific demands, always use the latest version of whatever you have reserved instances for. The reason I recommend this is that the new newest versions usually have the most powerful CPUs and the fact that the newest versions are usually the cheapest. Now let's talk about numbers. More specifically, the number you probably care most about when choosing a VM size. The size name of a VM consists of uh, one or two numbers, one being the version which we've just discussed, the other being the number of CPU cores you get. And yes, it's always the number of cores, you do not get to choose the number of gigabytes of RAM. The amount of RAM is always in relation to the number of cores. What the relation is depends on the series. To provide an example of this, let's look at the D series. This series is a general purpose series according to the Microsoft uh, doc pages and it gives you 4 gigabytes of RAM for each core, meaning that a D2 has 2 cores 
and 8 gigabytes of RAM. AD4 has 4 cores and 16 gigabytes of RAM and so on. Compare this to the uh, memory optimized E or M series that gives you either 8 or 27 gigabytes of RAM per core or the compute optimized F series that gives you 2 gigabytes of RAM per core. So what about all these other letters then? A size them can be easy like um, D2 version 3 or D2 V3 or they could be quite complex like the DADSV5 or even like uh, the first one I've seen so far, it's the NDASRA100 underscore V4. Whew. These extra letters are quite well standardized across the different series. So let's look at the most important ones. The easiest and most common one is the S. This simply indicates whether the VM will support premium disks or premium SSDs or not. If the S is part of the size name, then you can use premium disks. For example, a D2 does not support premium disks, but a D2S does. The next one is the one that is getting more and more common, the A. A is for AMD, simple as that. VM sizes with an A in their name has AMD based CPUs, mostly their Epic CPUs. And then you have the D. According to Microsoft, the D here stands for disk full, meaning that a size with a D in its name has a local temp disk. This is only for newer versions though, as earlier versions always included this. You also have three letters that relate to memory. You have the L, M and T. L stands for low memory, aka it has less RAM than the series otherwise would suggest. M means memory intensive, aka it has more RAM than the series otherwise would suggest. And the T means tiny memory, aka even less memory than the L variants. So with this in mind, let's dissect a size name as an example. Uh, let's use that as an exa example, or more specifically the D4 ADS V5. We see that the, it's a D series since the first D is capital. It has four CPU cores, and we, when we know that the D series has four gigs of RAM per core, we can calculate that this one has 16 gigs of RAM. The A suggests that it's AMD based and the D shows that it has a local temp disk and you have the S shows that it supports premium SSDs. And finally, the V shows us that it is version five of the VM size. The last thing I wanted to quickly mention before we move on to why all this matters is the generation. And generation in this sense could actually mean two things according to Microsoft, either really old uh, versions of VM sizes or more importantly, the generation of the VM itself. Generation two of VMs brings a few new features that uh, generation one does not support. Things like a virtual TPM chip, uh, <clears throat> so you can enable secure boots. You have UFI instead of BIOS, you have SCSI based disk drives instead of IDE, and so on. Like with VM size versions, always go for the newest, unless you have specific demands, that is. Now, why does all this matter? Well, cost and performance, of course. Instinctively, you want to select the size that gives you uh, the performance you need, and also you want the latest version, right? Well, in larger deployments, there is more to it than that. I would really recommend that you think about more than just performance and versions when you select a size. And the first reason here is that you should always already be using reservations or reserved instances as they are called for virtual machines. And the reserved instances isn't only for uh, whenever you'll have a specific VM running for at least a year. It's for whenever you know you'll have at least X amount of VMs of a certain type at any given time. I made a video about reservations a while back, so you can check that out if you want to know more about reservations or reserved instances. But this does tie in with selecting a size for your VMs because it might be worth it to select an earlier version or even another series. If that means that you can make use of reserved instances that you already have. Another reason to be extra thoughtful when selecting a size is if you are using or planning to use capacity reservations. I have a video up on that as well, but in short, there's no point in having an empty capacity reservation just sitting there waiting to be used 
or needed when you can run a VM in it and just kick that VM out when it's uh, when the need arises. That way you're not paying for both the capacity reservation and the VM saves you money. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Also, please leave a comment down below if there's Azure topics you want me to cover. And yeah, see ya.